Hello and welcome to ConsoleTraining.com's video on Granite 3.2.2 Bitmap Tutorial. Uh, this version has been in development for a very long time. Uh, we managed to get a preview of it um, about a month ago when it was being tested during user training down in Australia. Uh, but it's really exciting to see it out in the public forum now. It brings a lot of really good features. Today we're just going to be covering the bitmap tutorial, uh, which is an updated feature, but it's been vastly improved. So let's jump into it right now and we'll run through what we're running today. So we're running GrandMA on PC 3.2.2, uh, which is the current version as of the 2nd of June 2016, which is the time of recording this video. And we've got the attached MA3D version as well. We've already joined them. Uh, the question continues being asked despite being put in basically all our basic videos. But to get MA3D to talk to on PC, you have to go to Setup, Network Configuration, go to the 3D tab. In fact, I'm going to delete mine. Go to Add, pre uh, add Present and make sure that it is now a session member and you can also select the user here. I always run the same user in MA3D as I run in uh, on the console just so when I want to have selection available to me I can do that easily uh, if I need to grab fixtures in MA3D. And then later down the track if the fact that when I select fixtures in the desk it annoys me that it selects them in that I just disable it. So I'm fairly sure if I go fixture 100 through 200, yeah, it does show up. So I'm just going to fix that now by disabling sync selection. Lovely. So we're going to get started. So the show file we're using today isn't a custom show file. We've literally loaded the demo, dimmer, and more file, which is available. And it's a version that's quite old now. I think this was added in version, by the look of it... It's been added in version 2.8, and the latest time it received an update was 3.1.0.7. But that's okay. It'll perfectly illustrate the point. So we're going to go into screen 2, which has already got a layout view. Now, if we were doing this from scratch, we'd have to patch our LED fixtures, which what we're dealing with today is just... 100 LED PARs or LED pixels in this case, which we can see and I'm going to zoom in because we're not going to deal with any of the other bits of the stage today. We're just dealing with these pixels. So they are simply just an LED PAR can patched and put in an array. If we were doing this from scratch, we can go in and set up, go into fixture positions after patching all the PARs, go to our layer of LED, select them, and then we can use the wizard tool to create a matrix of 10 by 10 and then just do the spacing. That will give you what we've got here already. And then we'd need to take that into layout view. Now, we've got a lovely layout view and what we can do right here is I can just take this layout right now. I can delete out all the stuff that I don't need so I can literally go, you know, delete the spots part. But we're going to create our own one because I today have been taught a fantastic trick by one of my colleagues uh, who, we, uh, who we refer to as German Alex. Uh, so we're going to select fixture 100 through 200. And we're just going to drop into MA2 for the moment. So we're selecting fixture 100 through 200. And then we're storing that to a layer. And we're going to give that a name as well. We're going to give it the name uh, lead map, or let's call it pix map. And we're going to zoom to fit. Now what we've got is a hideous line of just all the pixels. And today I was complaining in the MA group uh, that it is really frustrating. We set our thing up in stage view and we align it and we use the matrix tool, but wouldn't it be good to have that matrix tool in layout view as well? And uh, 
Alex P said to me, what do you mean? You just drop it into setup view with your fixtures selected and you go arrange and you click on camera and it does it for you as per your camera view. And I felt like the world's biggest idiot. But here we go, today we've both learned something. But that solved it and now we've got our pixel map. So I'm gonna resize this for a sec. I'm gonna make it slightly smaller. And the first thing we need to do is we need to patch in the new bitmap fixture. So we go to setup, patch and fixture schedule, and we add in our bitmap tool. So we, I'm gonna create a new layer, call it bitmap. Search for MA lighting, and we want the one that's just appeared now called bitmap. We patch one of those. It doesn't matter what channel it's patched to, so we're gonna patch it to my normal remote universe of 50. And we're going to give it the fixture ID of 2016, just the year, because there's only one of them. We're going to come out of that. We're going to save. And we're going to wait for MA to push across. And then we're going to go back to my, I'm dealing with screen two, because that's what's already got the layout view on there. And I'm literally just going to select fixture 2016. So I've got it there to use. So one feature that's been added. Yeah, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. Uh, one feature that has been added is the way that we do pixel mapping. Previously, we had to do it off stage view and cameras. But now in this version, we go set up and we draw a rectangle. Sorry. We go set up and we draw a square. I was in a line before we draw a square, which is down here. And we draw a square around our pixel map, like so. And now we've got the option of visualization. We can make it a bitmap. So we click bitmap. And now when we go to our bitmap fixture, we've got a couple of options. We've got a dimmer, which is fairly obvious. We've got, and a bunch of video things. There's nothing under control, although it lights up, which is interesting. Uh, we go to video, and then there we've got the option of layout, where we want to send this, or what we want to control. And in our case, we want to control layout three. So we click layout three, and now we're controlling this layout view, because this is layout view three. Now, we're going to call up our image pool because this is where it gets its content from. So we go pools image and we've got all our default ones and we've also got the MA logo one. I've already hand loaded a video file just for demonstration. Uh, you can load it off a USB. You just right click, go import image and on a desk you can load it off a file. Otherwise you can just go into program data, um, program data, MA lighting, grand MA V 3.2.2 and then images, and then you can stick it in there. I've stuck it in the predefined folder, but you can stick it anywhere you need to. But there we have our files. I'm gonna delete the one that we just created that is in fact nothing. So if we select image 14, which uh, from memory is the MA logo, and we click add that, and we go to our combined view, we can see that we've got a very low pixel version of our MA3D logo. And if we go to video, we've got X, Y options. So if I bring up my encoder wheels, I can manipulate its location, X, Y, and Z. And because it's uh, 2D, it probably won't do much in that view that we can see. Then we've also got the capacity to rotate it. And then we've also got scaling options, just like you have with VPU. And we also have modes that we can do it in. So we can do it in RGB plus dim, just RGB alone. So we'd still need to call up, uh, you know, fixture 100 through 200 to get the dimmer. Um, or we can do obviously all presets and a bunch of other modes. 
MA in this has put out a fantastic little file, the MA bitmap file, which runs you through all your file formats and what you can do. And it runs through everything that we've done here today. And I'm just quickly checking through it to make sure I haven't missed anything. Yeah, so let's 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 run a bit of an effect. So just like we can do with normal things, if we drop in our effects pool, um, we create a new effect. I don't want to create a selected effect. So we create, you know, just a just a dimmer sign, and we change the attribute to, you know, X, and we repeat the process. I probably should have just saved that to a fader, but we go through the process again. Select it. We go video, layout 3, select 14, add that, and then we can run an effect, which I've grabbed the wrong one. Ah, because it's a video. Yeah, there we go. And we can see we've got the logo moving and we're pixel mapping, and it looks alright. We've also got, if we see here, if you're doing it off layout view, you've also, oh, you can actually drag the box. That's interesting. I didn't mean to grab the box. Uh, you've also got a preview of all your fixtures, and we can change these if we need to, so that they show a little less information. So we can turn off show dimmer value, show dimmer bar, And then if we zoom in, we can probably see a bit better of a uh, of a preview. There we go. So obviously, it's it's easier to do with layout view, or sorry, it's easier to do with MA3D open. Although I have a feeling if we go to stage view and we clear once, you can see it. You really need. Uh, MA3D running to be able to see a bitmap or obviously, you know, if you're using real fixtures, you can see it with real fixtures I'm sure there's going to be ways of doing um, a better preview that someone will be able to find at some point uh, But let's try now that I've destroyed my view Bad me not saving it uh, Let's try grabbing bitmap and let me just quickly open the images pool again and we'll select uh, image 17, which is a video file. Uh, let me just stop the effect that we've got running. Hmm, interesting. So we go output 3. And it's image 17, and we go add at, and we can see we've got a video file running. So, the little documentation that's attached with this will tell you what formats that it will take, but I'll read them out for you now. It takes an MP4 file, uh, MP2, uh, and then obviously most of your vision bitmap ones as well. So your bitmap, your JPEGs, your GIF files, your PNG files, and also TIFF files. Uh, which obviously you can convert, but there you go, that's that's pixel mapping, it's a lot easier in this version uh, than it was in previous versions, and now that you can do video files, anything up to 100 megabytes in size, it's, um, it's coming a long way, it's uh, really coming leaps and bounds. In the next video we're going to look at maybe RDM, if we can get our hands on some RDM fixtures. Uh, or we might be considering with our ba continuing with our basic series. Anyway, hopefully if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give us some feedback on it. It's been a pleasure running through this. Thanks for all the feedback. We apologize for such a large delay in releasing videos. We really wanted to wait until 3.2 was out to start doing videos again. So our 3.1 basic series will continue. It'll probably now be called 3.2 basics. Nothing really changes from there. Uh, so we'll be continuing on with that series, but hopefully you've enjoyed this one. 
And uh, thanks, guys. And also special thanks to everyone and the guys, everyone and the guys at uh, MA Lighting for being so supportive uh, with the questions and the, the dumb issues that we had today getting this up and running. Simple things that you miss when you're self-trained, uh, you know, end up biting you in the in the butt, so to speak. So I, I would always advocate, even though we create a lot of videos, I would always advocate that if you can go to your distributor training, speak to MA, do some on-site training with the guys, they'll teach you a lot. Uh, the videos that we create and the resources we create are fantastic for getting you up and running. And I firmly believe that, you know, if you've got the time, self-learning is a fantastic way of doing it. But if you need to get up to speed fast, then the, the proper MA University courses are really the only way to go. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.